Chrysler's shortcut to credibility in the small car sector has been to borrow and badge engineer Lancia's stylish little Ypsilon, a car that in Europe has proved equally popular with both city car and super mini buyers. Here, a combination of unique looks, high-tech options and the choice of clever twin-air petrol technology should establish it as a surprisingly appealing package. Once upon a time, size suggested the price that you'd pay for your car. The bigger the model you chose, the pricier it would be. That's no longer necessarily true. Spiralling petrol prices, emissions-based taxation and ever more congested city streets have all left many buyers no option but to choose a very small runabout. But sales of models like the Mini have proved them quite willing to pay premium prices provided the package on offer is stylish enough. This was an approach perfected by Italian brand Lancia long before the modern era Mini turned up. The Latin maker offering style conscious European city folk a succession of uh, comfortable, chic and responsible city runabouts wrapped up in cutting edge technology. Cars like this one, the Ypsilon, a Lancia, but not as we know it. Yes, as you see, it's a Chrysler badge engineering borrowed for the UK market where Lancia hasn't been sold since 1994, where the costs for relaunching the Italian mark are prohibitive and where Chrysler, uh, which is now owned by the Fiat Lancia conglomerate, urgently needs a range of more compact cars to sell alongside its US sourced saloons and MPVs. For all these reasons, every future compact Chrysler will, like this one, be borrowed from Lancia, a pragmatic approach to which it's difficult to object, uh, given that badge engineering already dominates proceedings across the small city car and super mini segments in which this Ypsilon will compete. One city car design is, after all, already shared by Toyota, Peugeot and Citroen. And in the Super Mini segment, uh, a Volkswagen Polo is of course little different from a Seat Ibiza or a Skoda Fabia underneath. Under the skin of this Chrysler lies a Fiat Panda platform, a slightly stretched version of that found in the diminutive Fiat 500 City runabout. Chrysler claim that it's big enough to offer this car uh, with the versatility you'd find in a Fiesta sized Super Mini, at the same time as retaining the urban chuckability that you get in a little Ford KA or a Toyota IQ. And they also reckon that at the same time this car has the style and the interior class to tempt potential buyers of the trendy, fashion conscious, premium, high cost small cars that I mentioned earlier, cars like the Mini or the Audi A1 big claims. Let's put them to the test. Now, under the bonnet of this model, buyers have the option of one of the most advanced engines ever developed for a small car, the one I'm using here, the 875cc Twin Air. Now, this 85 brake horsepower Petri unit may be less than a litre in size with only two cylinders, but it's darn clever, combining sparky performance, rest of 60 in just over 11 seconds, on the way to a top speed of uh, nearly 110 miles an hour, with CO2 emissions lower than any other quantity production petrol engine currently on sale. Everything, in other words, a small car engine should be. I've already praised it in the Fiat 500, and though its rumbly thrum doesn't suit this more upmarket Chrysler quite as well, it still uh, makes this car a distinctive sounding thing. You don't have to have it, but it's a pity not to. At the foot of the Ypsilon range, after all, there's an engine far inferior. It's a 1.2 litre petrol engine, but it only develops 69 brake horsepower, uh, which means that it struggles to 60 in around 14 seconds and struggles to break the three-figure barrier flat out. The only other engine option in this Chrysler is a 1.3 litre multi-jet diesel unit with 95 brake horsepower. But its advantages over this twin air in performance and running costs uh, will be deemed by many to be too slim to justify its £1,000 price premium. 
It's as well to remember, though, that this twin air model's headline grabbing fuel and CO2 returns can only be fully achieved by pressing this eco button near the gear stick, um, and that in doing so, uh, you reduce the engine's torque by 50%, the same kind of 100 newton meter figure you get in the entry level 1.2. The idea is that you should use this feature around town where you won't need all of the engine's torque anyway. And it's in these kinds of situations that you might also want to press this city button up here, uh, just below the unusually situated centrally mounted instrument binnacle. Now the city function is there to lighten the power steering so that uh, tight manoeuvring and parking become that much easier. Mind you, you won't really need it if you opt to pay extra for the clever magic parking system that I've got here. So yes, this Y will be very effective in its natural habitat on the back streets of Naples. But most British buyers will want this car to be a regular open road companion too, an area a little more outside this car's comfort zone. Even in its normal heavier state, the uh, uh, power steering is rather lighter than some enthusiasts will like but uh, it is reasonably direct and during fast cornering turns in more willingly than some uh, small car rivals. Refinement at low speeds isn't exemplary thanks to the curious rather ungainly note of the 0.9 litre engine but things improve as you hit higher speeds on major roads thanks to the efforts expended upon improving refinement. This special roof lining uh, reduces noise levels by up to 50%. Now, since neither Chrysler or this car's originators, Lancia, uh, feel it necessary to provide separate products to individually cover the Ford KA-like city car sectors and the uh, Ford Fiesta-like super mini segments, um, the designers behind this Ypsilon have felt free to bring us something that sits somewhere between the two in terms of size, uh, passenger accommodation and boot space. I should point out though that uh, in terms of pricing it certainly sits at the higher super mini end of that uh, spectrum. Uh, the justification for which is provided by what Chrysler term as segment leading luxury and eye catching design. To an extent I can see their point. If you want to stand out from the small car crowd this Ypsilon's distinctive design will certainly give you the means to do just that. Powerful projector headlamps sitting either side of the Chrysler shield light -like front grille. It's the design of two curves. The first taking the line of the bonnet, following it along the waistline and then rising up into the rear pillar. The second rising with the front A pillar to designate the roof line before falling around the outer edge of the tailgate window. Now you can see why it's a look that appeals so much to the trendy fashion conscious Latin women who account for most of this car's Italian sales, though it's not a look that translates quite as easily onto British streets. At first glance you'd pitch this as a sporty three door, but closer inspection reveals rear door handles concealed in the C-pillar. Use them and you'll find a tall cabin. Which is fine for adult headspace, but as you might expect, given a total vehicle length of just 3.8 meters, it's a little tight when it comes to knee and legroom, despite the use of slim seat technology for the chairs up front to try and improve the lot of those behind. On plusher Ypsilon models like this one, uh, three separate belts are rather hopefully provided, but you'll only really want to use them if you've a trio of kids to transport. Now behind in the boot, the extra three and a half inches of wheelbase length that this Chrysler enjoys over its Fiat 500 donor car really make all the difference. The uh, luggage capacity rising from the uh, fairly meagre 185 litres you get in the Fiat to a much more usable 245 litres, though that is still for 40 to 50 litres less than you get in a Fiesta or a Corsa. And as usual, uh, you can push forward the split folding rear seats. Uh, they're 50-50 split folding in the base model, but as here, 60-40 otherwise. Um, you can push them forward to increase that room dramatically. Take a seat up front 
and inevitably the first thing you notice is the unusual positioning of the instruments in the middle of the cabin on top of the centre console rather than straight ahead of you. It's a distinctive feature you quickly adjust to and no doubt it usefully reduces the cost of engineering for right hand drive markets. More of an issue for me is the darker feel of this cabin in comparison to the light airy atmosphere you get in a Fiat 500 and that's especially true when uh, this optional shiny piano black centre console finish is specified. It's all supposed to make it feel more upmarket and a variety of soft touch materials are on hand to try and emphasise the point. It's all decently screwed together by the same Polish factory that puts out the Fiat 500 and ergonomically things are pretty sound too once you master all the switch gear. Though rearward visibility could be better, you should also find it uh, fairly straightforward to get yourself into a comfortable driving position thanks to uh, a driver's seat that adjusts for height and a steering wheel that adjusts for rake though not for reach. Now, though the five door only design of this car may be sized midway between a little city car and a Fiesta sized super mini, the pricing is very firmly in super mini territory. Yes, it's true that uh, you can get yourself uh, an entry level version of this Chrysler for around £11,000, but that'll only see you in the poverty spec 1.2 litre basic uh, petrol model that most will want to avoid. It's really worth finding the extra £1,200 that you'll pay as a premium on top of the basic 69 brake horsepower 1.2 litre petrol variant to get yourself into the twin air, uh, the 0.9 uh, litre 85 brake horsepower twin air that I have here. And twin air Ypsilons are priced in the 13.5 to £15,500 bracket that will account for most sales of this car. Uh, for around uh, another £1,000 on top of your chosen twin air model, you can also have the auto gearbox that will appeal to the urban bound. I'd be less inclined to find an extra £1,000 on top of the basic twin air price to get myself into a diesel version of this Ypsilon. After all, the uh, performance and running cost benefits uh, that come with the diesel are pretty marginal. As for rivals, well, it's hard to find a direct one since most lifestyle orientated small cars like the Mini or the Fiat 500 lack this Chrysler's five door versatility. For the record, you're looking at a premium of about £2,000 to own this Ypsilon over an identically engined Fiat 500. As for the Mini, well, uh, the Mini would be a bit more expensive at entry level point, but when it comes to uh, a twin air or a diesel Ypsilon, then you're looking at the same kind of money that you'd pay for a comparable mini hatch equivalent. Now comparisons with more mainstream super minis like a Ford Fiesta or a Vauxhall Corsa are more difficult. After all, uh, you'd need a 1.4 litre petrol Fiesta or Corsa to match a 0.9 litre Ypsilon in terms of performance. But in rough terms, you're probably looking at a premium of around a thousand to two thousand pounds to own this Chrysler over a comparable uh, mainstream super mini uh, alternative. Uh, the super mini alternative would be slightly larger, but slightly less trendy, it's your call. Now, whichever Ypsilon model you choose, the entry level 69 brake horsepower 1.2 litre petrol, this uh, 0.9 litre 85 brake horsepower twin air petrol, or indeed the 1.3 litre uh, 95 brake horsepower multi-jet diesel, whichever of those models you choose, you should find your car reasonably equipped. Though the entry level, the very basic 1.2 poverty spec petrol uh, does do without things like a 60-40 split folding rear seat and a third rear seat belt. But even on that car, you get things like an MP3 compatible CD stereo, uh, electric front windows, a 12 volt power socket, a hill holder clutch to stop you drifting backwards on uphill junctions, and uh, see you home headlights that briefly stay on after you lock up to guide you to your front door at night. Most Ypsilon models though are far better provided for than that, with features like climate control, power mirrors and uh, a leather trim covering for the gear shift gator and the steering wheel. And top of the range variants like this one include things like uh, 15 inch alloy wheels, leather seats and front fog lights. And of course, as with most premium small cars, 
you can go a lot further than that if you delve deeply into the options list and rack the asking price up to the kind of level that would buy you a really trendy urban fashion accessory like a, a Mini or an Audi A1. I'd start with one of the two-tone paint finishes that are so popular with this car on the continent. Choosing one of these really does create a very distinctive look indeed. Then I'd want to consider one of some of the high-tech touches, auto headlamps and wipers perhaps, or the really clever Blue and Me TomTom Tom Live integrated sat-nav system that plugs its uh, very neat colour touchscreen into a purpose-designed slot to the right of the steering wheel on the A-pillar and enables you to manage both your route and your phone calls. You can also use it to manage your audio preferences too, which are best served by an optional 360 degree 500 watt sound system that's unusually sophisticated for such a small car. Townies though may prefer to spend the extra money on another feature unusual in such a compact car, this magic parking system. Radar sensors help you locate a suitable spot and then take over steering wheel control to guide you into it. Neat. As for safety, well, though the entry-level variant only has four airbags, all other models in the Ypsilon range feature six twin front, twin side and twin curtain bags. It's a pity that uh, VSA stability control is only standard on the twin air auto model. Um, it's optional otherwise, although not on the base model. But you do get ASR anti-slip regulation, traction control and electronic brake force distribution to make more effective an anti-lock braking system that instantly advertises emergency stops to following motorists with automatically activating hazard flashes. Uh, Anti-whiplash front head restraints and Isofix child seat fastenings also make the final team sheet. Now though some buyers may be prepared to pay a premium to get themselves into one of these rather than some uh, more conventional small car rival, they'd be unlikely to be so accommodating were running costs not to be at the sharp end of affordable. And here that's exactly what you get. In this twin air model, for example, the uh, CO2 return can be as low as 97 grams per kilometre if you go for the automatic model, 99 grams per kilometre uh, otherwise and these are figures that no other petrol engine rival can beat. The fuel consumption figure is nearly as impressive, 67.3 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle. The 1.3 litre multi-jet diesel model does even better, delivering 74.3 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 99 grams per kilometre of CO2. Save your upfront cash and opt for the entry level 1.2 litre petrol model, uh, the 69 brake horsepower unit, and uh, you'll get a set of running cost figures though that um, trail the Pokia models by some way. 57.6 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 115 grams per kilometre of CO2. Now, all this is possible thanks to an agile weight, a whisker under one tonne, and all the latest eco conscious fuel saving gadgetry. Now this includes a start-stop system that cuts the engine when you're stuck at the lights or when you're waiting in an urban jam, although it does also uh, diminish the effectiveness of the aircon system, which might cause a few uh, sweaty moments in the hotter summer months. Uh, also effective are low rolling resistance tyres, and the driver can also play their part thanks to a gear shift indicator light on the dash. Had Chrysler's American engineers developed this model from scratch rather than simply borrowing a Lancia design, it's doubtful whether they would have bought us a better car than this, or even one as good. Distinctive styling and the option of a world-leading twin-air petrol engine are both big draws for this Ypsilon, justifying premium asking prices further offset by impressively low running costs. As long as you avoid the bottom end of the range, specification is reasonable and there are plenty of high-tech options to make downsizing into a car of this kind a relatively painless process. True, there isn't the kind of build solidity you'd get in something German, but don't let that put you off too much. Given the humble underpinnings used, the designers have done a fine job here in creating a high-quality feeling product. 
It won't be one you'll see frequently on British roads, but for the select band of UK buyers who opt for one of these, that'll be all part of the appeal. Chrysler at last has credible credentials when it comes to compact cars. If you're after one of the very smallest and you'd like to try something just that little bit different, then here's a very appealing place to start your search. <laughs>